Hello and welcome back dear friends, it's me Odo. I'm back in my Pathfinder Wrath of the Right Lane. And last time I just wanted to do in between episodes some deep over. <laughs> I ran around with my uh, army a bit, then tried to rest, and after the rest uh, there came the sequence, so I had to do this again. Uh, whatever. Dreams have puzzled the minds of mortals. The most obvious explanation of the mystery of dreams has appeared quite the most obvious but obviously wrong one is the dream of the delirium of a tired mind as it digests the day's events. Ancient humans were much smarter when they thought dreams were messages of good patrons or the opposite. Interventions of demonic powers, in this case both hypotheses are correct, as that may be. The commander is asleep. In his anxious dreams, he sees blood-stained stones, smoking torches, rusty chains and bars. Once again, he's in the dungeon of Dresden. Chained in a cell, huge demons lumber around, clawing at the filthy walls with a horrifying sound. Dresden, in their fanged jaws, seems imminent. But more painful still is the expectations, is the expectation of tortures that never begin. Unable to move, barely conscious, a horrible semi delirium, the commander mutters a stream of curses, whispers words of prayer, silently waits for whatever will happen next. Adds. Silence broken only by the sound of rough claws against rusty bars weighs on the mind like a boulder. <sighs> the fever of endless expectation broken by a whisper, a gentle breath of fresh air in the stifling dark, stifling darkness. The ruby eyes of a demoness ear at the commander through the bars. He is similar to the other creatures of the abyss, but also entirely dissimilar. You don't know me, but I know a lot about you. My name is, is Arushale. I'm a prisoner. Yeah, well, actually, I see that. But I've come to give you freedom. The chains holding the commander's body crumble to dust. Dark Visitor takes a step him, passing through the bars as easily as if they were made of paper, and holds out her hand. Fly with me. In response, the commander can only mumble, let's fly. <laughs> Get back, demon. I've been expecting you. Ha! Huh? Why not? And I have come. The dungeon disappears. Now the demoness and the commander are flying over a moonlit plain. Enemies are hunting you. Demons that have somehow acquired unusual powers that are unprecedented on them. Demons, you are also hunting them. You are trying to figure out who is sending them and where the source of their power lies. I will show you where to find the answer. A finger with a manicured claw points down to a cliff top, where stands an ancient fortress slowly crumbling. L without a tongue, an insane crone. Make it speak once more, and she won't be able to keep her silence either. She will give you all the answers. Wake up and try to understand what happened in the dream. Really? Go away. The images fade away. Commander opens his eyes and whispers a word unknown alien brought by the passing dream. Green Gates. The name of the fortress. 
the demoness is to be believed, the curious notion, there is a deranged crone hiding there who knows where the demons with these unheard of abilities are coming from. It will be intriguing to learn who this crone is, what she knows, and whether this dream is but a trick to lure the commander into another trap. But we cannot find out without visiting the place from the dream. Green Gate has been revealed. Okay, where is Green Gates? Shrine of Sacrilege. Oh, there is Green Gate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we are good now. Forty days. Yeah, last time we killed a f an army there. Not sure if I want to kill every day an army because then we can't keep up with the things. That's or at least let's move thing. Mm -hmm. Can we recruit guys? No, we can't. Who's that? Hmm. Okay, there is something here. Hmm. Uh, in between episodes, I also did some other thing. I started three decrees. First of all, the, I gave orders to Irabeth, uh, one decree concerned the, these lost scouts and one was uh, I paid some money to uh, know something about the fate of Chill Roar's hide and tuck. Okay, um, this one we can do because this is the only on this that the leaderships that uh, don't have a decree with giants a progressive alchemist by the name of Saggleforns <laughs> ran a series of experiments in an attempt to improve the potion of legendary proportion but something went wrong soldiers who tasted his creation cannot return to their natural form and have grown quite dim. However, the alchemist assures everyone that no, no harm has been done since giants are more useful than ordinary soldiers, and the usefulness of intelligence in a soldier is debatable in the first place. <laughs> Make a decision. Choice 1. Send the giants to perform heavy manual labor. Cure the pure, poor victims. This is good. This is... Nothing about... And knocks the... Normal giants decree. Use the giant in battle. Found a separate settlement for giants. Hmm. Interesting. Should we found a new settlement for them? 
Why not? This is an intriguing choice. Let's do it. Living alongside former comrades would be a, would be difficult for the clients. They need a place where they can live by themselves and slowly learn to coexist with the rest of the world. Len will help them find a place for a settlement so they could start a new life there. The crusade will only benefit from this ring. Giants can supply it resin with resources. The alchemist suckle forms strongly in bosses. It is this easy. Yeah, we are great. You're so good. Two more leadership things. Arrival of Blackstone Company, a mercenary group going by the name of the Blackstone Company has arrived in Dresden. The leader Captain Seilkind seeks an audience. Okay. And what's that? A request from the theater crew. Oh. Let's get back. I really like the theater crew, so let's move to Dread. I'm too tired. Let's go to the Citadel. Uh, this game is so slow. <laughs> Let's make these two um, dialogues and then... Come on, Citadel. You can do this. Hey, oh boy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sailkind. Before you stands a tall, fit man whose dark hair is already tinged with grey. You with a brisk military salute. My name is Captain Sailkind. I command the Vanguard of a mercenary group called the Blackstone Company. We've come from Andorra, Andorran. I want to know more about your unit. Why'd you join up with us? Queen Galfrey paid for our services, but please do not think we're fighting for gold alone. We are true sons and daughters of Endoran, so the ideals of equality and pavement ring true in our hearts. We'll be glad to stand in the way of demons who seek to mortal kind and bulk of our company made Camp Nerosian, but the Wingard, consisting of 
our finest soldier army add put under your command. Okay. Um how about tell me about your unit Blackstone Company? It's proud to be recognized as one of the finest in Doran. Mercenary regiments. We are not a bunch of I group your cell swords looking to oppress the innocents and serve the tyrants of the world. No, we are adventurous adventurers eager to get involved in a dangerous enterprise and leave it with pockets full of gold and a clear conscience. Yeah, of course. That is why we held a vote among our units. We are glad to accept Queen Gelfry's invitation to join the crusade, though some of our com commanders um, did voice their displeasure with the sum she offered. But like I said, we Endorans are free people. We cannot be pushed around, and you cannot be bought. Only convinced. Um. Yeah. Tell me more about your stuff. I don't even know what to say. I'm a soldier bit of an explorer, and just an all-around honest man. Yeah, of course. No one's all-around honest. Get on with your duties. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Let's see what you guys have to say. I pretty much like them. Grandma Gratlin, the director. Good day, your commandership. It is we, the artistic board of the next door theater. We are still working on our piece about your heroism. We have even taken on a few new crew members. We now have a master of stage equipment and scenery. It's my granddaughter, Tina. Inner, say hello to his commandership. Uh, we are faced with another dilemma. We simply can't decide on a climactic moment for the act that's all about the battle. Hmm. Here you listen to the options. Okay. Let's give me your Option 1. The commander, so that's you, launches himself out of a catapult and smashes down the fortress wall, allowing the armies to rush inside. Option 2. The commander, so that's you again, masquerades as a succubus and creeps into the present in disguise. And then opens the gates to the crew. Hmm. Option number 3. The commander, so that's you again. Rides to the attack uh, on an enormous mountain boot. I think that that's great. Or should we call it a battering ram? And it breaks down the city gates. Well, what say you? Uh... Hmm, I like the version where I launch myself out of a catapult. The cross dressing is a succubus version. As a succubus version, surely. I like the version where I ride on the back of an enormous mountain goat. But where are you going to get a goat that size? Ah, we're still working on that part, your commandership. Hard to get a goat in the middle of the world wound. If so. Hmm. Uh, okay. Grandma Gratlin and her entourage move away. But their voices project so well that you can really hear the rest of the conversation. 
Do you think the commander will mind if we add the goat and the catapult to the show? That way the bit where he breaks down the gates will make for much better drama. Ah, Granny, did you forget that the role of the commander is being played by those gnome twins? Hmm... Calm yourself, you know. It's just a mirror snag. You can't achieve success without a few difficulties along the way. We'll think of something you'll see. Okay. That's that? Really? This is the reason why I had to come home? Ah, uh, there is a third man. The third man, Captain Odun. Commander, it is an honor to call this first meeting of the Military Council. Ah, these are the councils that we uh, established in our first day. I am Captain Odon, and I've been serving under your command ever since. The assault on the Great Garrison. I will do my best to be as much as to you as possible in this role. The foundation of the military is called calculation and discipline. These are the principles. I will seek to impart the crusader. Hmm. Well, Commander, your sister Sila is no renowned is no renowned general. But she spent half her life hustling with evil. It looks like I'll be stepping up on behalf of all Iomides faithful of all of Iomides faithful here. Yeah. I hope my advice will prove useful. Yeah, let's see. The first issue on the military council's agenda is the reorganization of troops. Infantry has been bled dry. Before this, Her Majesty granted to us enough to take Dresden, but we need more troops to hold it. Furthermore, the army has more assembled Great Tate. Forces Her Majesty granted to us were enough to problem. Oh, I'm too tired. Unfortunately, um, I'm sleeping away while I'm um, while I'm reading. This is uh, this will be a stupid um, episode for you. To do. Unfortunately, we don't have much time for redeployment. Scouts report the powerful Balor Koram uh, already preparing a retaliatory. On but we can rely on freshly conscripted Scandavian soldiers. They may not have the skill, but our strength, as always, lies in the number and fervor of the volunteers joining the army. Uh, or the crusades. We can't throw everyone into the mind meat grinder. We'll just get our youths killed for nothing. We need to select a bet. Roots or even better hold the contest. Hmm The death count is always highest in the infantry. Its purpose is to serve as a shield. It would be wise to invest our resources in hiring and training heavy foot shields to ensure maximum protection, even if it limits their mobility and makes them less threatened. <sighs> what does the military council do? Who is this Balor? The 
servant of the demon Lord Descari. Among the historians of the Mandavian Crusades, he is known as a strategist. Mm -hmm. um, he's not as renowned as Minago, the conqueror of Dresden, or Hepsamira, daughter of Aphomet, but he always. Uh, but he has claimed the most major victories over the force and if he's a general and quite possibly one of the best the entire ends. so yeah I've been studying his style of warfare for years he may seem like an ordinary demon another typical war taskmaster Oh, his uncanny cannon, blah 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 blah. More soldiers to him, so he's never short on troops. He sacrifices them like pawns whenever he pleases in order to achieve his victory. So, uh... Oh, Quorum Sada is the face of the demon host. For many years, I've. blah blah blah. Whatever. I have a question for my advisors. We are ready to answer any questions you may have. Sila, have you ever commanded an army before? Rachel, why do you wish to seek a military council? Hmm. Let's do this. I have command experience and I intend to impart. Uh, mm -hmm. Sila, why are you there? Not on a scale like this, of course not. I fought evil and I know its tricks. Besides, war makes people jealous. It's always useful to have a paladin at the mount to remind you at a crucial moment what we are actually fighting. Right. Uh, I've served in the front line of the Mandavian army for over 25 years. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, I want to. Oh, okay. We'll hold contests and select the most proficient warriors. What's that? The main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for champions. Powerful shock. All footmen are promoted to champions. Ah, okay. Or. Main barracks provides weekly recruitment growth for shield bearers. Staunch defensive infantry. Hmm. That's what our ranks with you. Main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for conscript. <sighs> okay, these are doing more damage, probably. These are taking less damage. Shield bearers and champions. What's a champion? Ah, okay. AC 10, flat footed 10, touch 23 hit points. Damage to 25. Okay. And. Hmm. <laughs> oh, wait. Shield bearers? They do no damage at all, but they have an 80 of 17 and they have 160 points. Oof. And they have a damage reduction of 1. 
yeah, I think the shield bearers are the best choice. I mean, conscripts are... Wait, conscripts have much higher hit points than the champion? How can this be? Yeah. Don't know why, but these are... I will monitor the recruiter's work and the preparation of all necessary equipment. Thank you for your time, Commander. When the reforms are finished and the ranks of our infantry are replenished, I will assemble the military council to discuss new decisions. Okay. And the next one. That's probably the... Lady, Lady Konomi, sharp looking Kitsune, gives a quick blah blah blah. Commander, the matters before us are urgent, so let's not stand on ceremony. I'm Lady Konomi, the official attache of Nerosian. Here are my credentials. Blah blah blah. blah. Majesty has instructed me to lead your headquarters. Um. You had all this diplomatic council. Okay, honestly, I was surprised when Lady Konomi asked me to join this council, but I will do my best to fill the shoes of a trained diplomat. Um, yeah, strange. I got invited to the council too. I'm sure foreign ambassadors will be thrilled to see my face and my manners. Why he? I, like many nobles, have been trained in it in diplomacy, and in fact, I hold the title of royal emissary. It is passed down the Arendelle line. I must say that pre prior to this day, I employed my diplomatic skills solely to undermine Mendev's international reputation. It's time to break that habit. I imagine preventing international scandals will be just as interesting as causing them. Who knows? I might even enjoy it. Hmm. Okay. Yep. You find someone's present surprising. Um, let's ask her about this. It's unbecoming becoming of a diplomat to talk about themselves at length. How am I to refuse you? I come from Tianxia, from the noble Kitsune. Like any Kitsune, I have always been curious to a fault. My adventures brought me to Avistan. Uh, too much, too much words. I met my first true love politics. I've served as a diplomat in the courts of six sovereigns, but working for Her Majesty turned out to be most interesting of all. Such riveting webs of intrigue and interests on around the world and the world wound. Why do you choose Lan? The diplomat called this little trick mysterious Gerundi print. During negotiations, it's always useful to have on your side a representative of some obscure but potentially populous and powerful nation without knowing what they are up against and how many mongrels there are. Our diplomatic partners will have to contend with, its, with this dark. Okay. So Mr. Len will be our mongrel prince if we are negotiating with foreign ambassadors and I make his sign. Lady Kumano, you immediately start talking about how offensive their propo proposition is to the mongrel people. Do we have a deal, Mr. Len? 
if I suspected the word diplomat was synonymous with fraud, but I thought you would be deceiving me, not deceiving others with my help. No, that's not an option. I can represent Wongra's ne negotiations, but I'm not going to lie through my teeth. Blech. He's lawful. Why did you want Aaron to take part? Why? Because of Count Arendee's influence, naturally. He's a Mandavian aristocrat. The nobility will be inclined to listen to his opinion. And by ensuring the support of the nobles, we'll find ourselves powerful allies. Hmm? Oh, believe me, Lady Konomi, I will exert all my effort and influence to make this council's job exciting. Okay. That won't be a problem in my homeland, Tianxia, inviting clerics and paladins of Shedin, the Lady of Antimiums, to take part in diplomatic missions is a common practice. They may not be politicians, but they are perceptive, advocate peace, and favor balanced solutions. I'm flattered by the respect that the worshippers of my goddess receive in Lady Konomi's homeland. I won't let you down, I'll depart fast, and I'll make every effort. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, do I need it? What's on the edge? I hate to say it, Commander, but not everyone in Erosian is pleased with your progress. Some believe that, to use their words, you are out of control and fancy yourself an independent leader. An independent leader. It wouldn't surprise me if you encountered supply disruptions in the near future. I would suggest putting their anger, show the capital you haven't forgotten about the chain of command. For example, you could hold a parade in honor of Her Majesty. Ugh. This probably will cost a lot. If we need to demonstrate that we are keeping the Rosian in mind, why don't we invite the capital's high priest of Tutraven for a religious festival? It will be appropriate and the church's support will shield us from the accusations of schemers. Um, yeah, that's probably sensible. Pander to the naysayers. I think not. I propose we hold a parade in, in your honor, Artibald Fast. This is your victory, and if Cousin Gelfrey wants to show off in front of the soldiers, he's welcome to something of her own. <laughs> Are they out of their mind? We've got a whole dragon full of soldiers who need medicine, food and weapons. Until everyone has been taken care of, we can't waste a single coin on pointless celebrations. Hmm, this probably makes most sense. <laughs> In a military sense of, of thinking, what did I do to incur Nerosian's content? You were too good. You reclaimed Canabras, you won the Battle of Dresden, you're a menace to the world wound, your authority grows and the influence of it means confidence diminishes. This creates the impression that there's only enough space for you at the top. Members of the Royal Council are afraid that you will muscle them out of the political area altogether. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If we could invite the high priest, what does the unlocks religious tree, or commander's parade, or helping those in need decree, or royal parade decree? Hmm. Well, I. I, I will not do one of these two. Hmm.
Yeah, let's do this first. Why not? A moment, Commander. I understand that you're used to being the highest authority in all matters, but political decisions are an exception. I'm a professional in this field. You're not. By ignoring my recommendations, you are not only deliberately seeking conflict with the capital, but disregarding common sense as well. I urge you to reconsider. <laughs> You've invited my companions to the diplomatic council, and now you ref re you refuse to listen to their opinions. The needs of my soldiers are mostly more important than the whims of your bureaucrats from the capital. Persuade this person very well. I changed my mind. I hold a parade in the queen's honor. Well, let's ask her this first. I'm simply suggesting that you give your companions time to find their feet in the council and to grasp the principles of being a diplomat. Also, if they went on the council, your decisions could be mistaken for the decrees of a tyrant. And that is definitely not the public image you need. Ah, now I understand the role that I've been given, Lady Konomi. I'm supposed to stand in a pretty duplet and keep my mouth shut. I can promise you the former, but not the latter. <laughs> you think you have the right to... The... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I think it feels sensible, so let's do it. However, I have no choice, choice but to inform the capital that you have disregarded my recommendations. Actions like these are precisely what gave Nerosian court you for concern, Commander. I hope you will revise the city defiant stance in future. That's right, and everyone who's unhappy with our actions can go ahead and leave their mansions in the Rosian and come here to tell us so in person. And if something happens to them along the way, we'll have just enough money to stitch their arms and legs back on. And with that, we can bring this meeting of the Diplomatic Council to a close. It is unfortunate things were so tense, but I'm sure we'll soon have many more opportunities to resolve any misunderstandings between us. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the, there are two more... What's that? Uh, Captain Harmatan, Hill Commander is the before you an aged yet fit and sturdy Garundi stands at attention his dark skin and earthy tone to it. Captain Hamathan, care of your staff council by order of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey here to deliver a report. I'm on this council too. We'll be racking our brains on how to improve troop morale. I reckon the key is to back up our words with actions. Lead your soldiers by example and they'll be eager to follow. Drawing on my experience as a paradictor, my advice is to maintain calculated moderation in every regard. be it in, the, in incentive or penalty, and to be decisive. We have no need for doubts terminal. I'm doomed to be your advisor, but do you know what that means? That you're doomed to listen to my advice, to start things off. Here's an incredibly novel and deep thought for you. Loyalty, passion and moral all of these can easily be bought with money. Commander, permission to report. We've encountered a problem. 
although we're still getting volume tears, we are now seeing cases of desertion. Many who joined the threatened campaign believe that their duty has been fulfilled with the victory, and they are not keen on staying in the garrison. Those from Canabras wish to return home and rebuild the ruined city. Lastly, there are those who are afraid of lingering in a place where demons might show up with a retaliatory expedition at any moment. My suggestion is to improve living conditions for the privates. Raise their pay give them extra rations and reward those who have distinguished themselves on the battlefield with commendations and gifts. Soldiers don't want to leave armies that appreciate them. Mm -hmm. We could clap on the balcony. I feel for those folks, but we have to convince them to stay. I think we might get some help from the servants of the gods. They'll tell the soldiers that the danger has not yet passed. Hmm. Most of the Crusaders are volunteers, but they have no right to subvert military discipline. That kind of attitude is tantamount to treason, regardless of who expects. We have to identify the instigators, arrest them, and administer, yeah, 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 whatever. This problem is quite, quite simply solved with coin, but handing money out to privates is practically throwing it away. We need to pay the officers handsomely, then they'll figure out how to raise their subordinates. So, tell me, Captain, what does the Stuff Council do? Captain, you are hiding a crime from me, confess. So those went me rumors. Heaven truly has granted you the power to see the truth in the hearts of those with guilty conscience. In that case, Commander, there's, here's my confession. It's for you to decide whether I deserve a pardon or a punishment. Mm -hmm. I served my nation faithfully for a hundred years under three rulers. I accepted youths into service at times, just to bury them a week later with my own hands. I know the price of blood, Commander, mine and the enemy's, which is why I immediately sensed danger when a new superior officer was assigned to us, a high-born brat whose only military experience had been watching parades for him our lives and deaths were playing with toy soldiers came to the front lines to show off, send a company or two to their graves and return to his family estate a hero. In one battle, when he tried to lead our unit into a foolish suicidal attack, I stopped him. I didn't wish to bury another hundred recruits that day, so I buried a single officer instead. Hmm. Probably well done was a fight later. A week three, we only lost two soldiers. Then I came to my general and told him everything. The general was an old soldier. He understood. But we both knew that the family of the deceased wouldn't want me dead. They would have pressured the court and I would have been hanged. So the general ordered me to leave the army, to leave my homeland and find another war where I could use blah 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 blah. Not be good. Uh, no, no priests. Yeah, well, the captain had the most sensible thing. Whatever this does, I will do it at once. I'll distribute the pay and rations right away. The commendation list won't take long either. We should see results. I should have looked at that. Thank you, commander. Should any other difficulties arise that require your attention, I'll deliver a new report promptly. Okay, so...
Floor Galinda Stranglehold. <laughs> Hail Commander. What's that? Um Council. Okay. Who's on the Logistics Council? Len again. Hopefully this council will benefit from my vast experience surviving with gear that consists of rolls and sticks where any dinner that's not warming up on your plate is considered a feast. Uh, all in all, kind of, yeah, he's probably better there. I won't lie to you, our logistics are a mess. We need more of everything. And what we do have is in this area, crates of provisions are rotting away in storehouses because some idiot quartermaster spilled beer on the papers and fools are not the worst problem. There also, there's also theft. Some officers grease palms, look at the helmet with stylish plumage or a fancy blade from Nerosian. Meanwhile, that means that ordinary soldiers are being armed with barely more than kitchen knife. Hammer and tongs. Time to give the entire logistics stuff the bums rush. The question is, where do we, uh, do we find capable and honest people to replace them? Let's get some veterans on the job. People who've had their fill of the front lines and who know firsthand what life is like for a common soldier, what the rations taste and how the boots are always the wrong size. Uh, that's kind of kind of sensible. My suggestion is to call some experienced, well-connected supply officers from Nerosian let them leave their crushy jobs in Mendef and work up a sweat for the good of the crusade. Okay. Mm. Trainable units. All trainable units gain the only essentials. Fit. What's only essentials? Unit has a plus ten percent bonus to maximum. And what's this? The unit has a plus one bonus to attack and all saving throws. Hmm. Is ten percent more hit points better? Or plus one? the attack i mean we took the shield bearers there the attack plus one would be bigger because they have a very small attack and with plus one it's a larger increase Nah. Hmm. Let's take the, the veterans. That it's decided. No matter what our new quartermasters are like, there's no possible way it can be worse than what we have now. The results will be reported to you. And if anything else comes up, I'll call the council right away. Okay. That was that. This was too long. I'm too tired and I will go to bed now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> and we'll see each other again soon. Bye.